only two more bulkheads to go, and then I can start installing the cabin sides. The Wave Rover 650, a design based on my single-handed ocean voyages. She's small, light, but easy to build and strong enough to cross any ocean. My name's Alan Mulholland, and this is the Wave Rover story. Now, in the previous episode, you saw me install bulkhead number four. And bulkhead number four was an important one because it forms a transition between the two different cambers in the cabin top. Now, in this episode, we're going to tackle bulkheads five and six. Now, they're both important. Number five, that's going to be our watertight bulkhead that'll divide about the forward third of the Wave Rover. And bulkhead six, well, that's the bulkhead that's going to support the mass structure. There's a lot to do. Time to crack on. Well, we're going to start off with bulkhead number six. And this is where the mass is coming through. It's going to be fairly straightforward, but I'm still going to build it in two pieces. Well, maybe more. Anyway, the first step is to make a template. Okay, let's take a quick look at the template we've made. Um, start down at the bottom. So what I've done is I've created a half model and I have a little mark on the far side here. You may not be able to see it. Uh, that tells me where the center line is. And then I just have a little diagonal brace here and that's just to hold the whole structure in one position so that the bottom doesn't change and I've got another diagonal here and that brings me out to a level line with the top and then I've put a center line mark here so from here the camber is above that and then over here I have marked it with what is my cabin top which I've indicated on our on our pattern here and the this angle right here is the slope of the cabin side. So I, I have everything in place. I just need to take this <clears throat> down delicately and create a plywood version of this. So step one was to find a piece of plywood that would accommodate the size of the uh, pattern that we made. All right, so then I just laid it out as you've seen me do so many times. And I'll just delicately put this off to the side. So what's left then is an outside line here. And then from that, I made it extra thick all the way. Everything's notched in. And then to get this nice curve, we just used a 20 liter bucket. And that gave us our nice curve. And then the tricky bit is really getting the right camber. So in this case, we have this left over from our, uh, the, the previous bulkhead we did in the last episode. I have a center line, so I made sure that everything was centered. And then I made sure it zeroed out right here in the corner at the top of the cabin slope. So that's our camber, not a whole lot, but we want to be consistent. And it's a nice heavy section of ply that'll be left over. So we'll be doing this in three pieces. This being one, then there'll be an identical one. And then we'll connect the bottoms together uh, with a third piece. All right, let's crack on with the cutting.
Okay, so I made a bit of an executive decision to change instead of that big curve that I formed with the bucket, I've just done two smaller curves to give myself more depth. Um, no big reason, like we're well past what the plans call for, but why waste the ply? You know, it's, it's, that'll make it particularly strong and not really adding more than an ounce or so of weight. Anyway, I still have to take this out with the saw and then do a test fit. Well, I have to say I didn't sleep well last night on account of yesterday's work, and I'll show you why. So this is the camber that we have uh, after installing these, and to my eye, it looks almost flat, or it's too flat. And it, it's not really, it's, it's actually, this camber is two and a half inches over eight feet, but it looks flat on this short segment. I think I would be a lot happier if I had a little more camber. I'm going to play around with that. I'll show you what I come up with uh, right away. So this is the new camber I'm thinking of. It's actually twice the camber of the of the plan. So let's just uh, explain it a little bit better here. So this is the original uh, camber that you're looking at. And this is the cabin side right here. So this, of course, wouldn't exist from here over. But the, the OSB indicates the new camber. And it doesn't look outrageous at all. It looks, it looks right to me. So I'm going to uh, have to rejig this bulkhead now to uh, incorporate this new camber. Set me behind a little bit of time. But, you know... Um, there are so many things you can change on a boat placement of cleats and stuff, but uh, camber on the cabin top is not one of those things you're going to change. So it's good to get it right the first time. And, you know, it's, it, I, I guess it comes down to the individual, but that looks far more pleasing to my eye than the original. So I'll be changing the cabin camber of the forward section to this. However, the aft section there that you're seeing, uh, that camber is locked in. I'm really happy with that one too. All right, let's crack on with the change. Okay, so this is our solution. Let's go install it. Okay, so there we go. The new piece is installed. And, you know, that that certainly doesn't look like too much camber at all. It, it looks good to me. I mean, you could even go more than that. But that is double the camber that was in the plans. I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, I'll just show you on the other side how I plan to install this. So right along here, I'm going to make a saw cut. And then we'll make a gusset that will go pretty much overlapping at least to here on each side. So this will be in the same plane as the rest of it with a gusset on each side. And then on top of that, this whole, just like all the bulkheads, they get a solid piece of wood that runs straight across that'll enable us to secure the cabin top too. But yeah, that, uh, that's good. It gives me a little more headroom on the inside of the boat. Uh, the second thing I've done is I've worked out a way here of uh, securing the bottom. So we're going to have this piece right here going straight across and it'll be sandwiched by another piece either side, which I still have to cut. So we'll try to glue all that up at the same time. All right, well, plenty of little things to do. Time to crack on. Well, that was, that was a little hard to see. <laughs> I think we're pretty good though. Okay, so I just rough fit these gussets in right here. 
and I've marked around the edge. And the reason I've marked around the edge is so that I know where to uh, put the thin epoxy when we glue this up. I've also marked the far side uh, to catch the camber and I'll trim that off before I install them. And then of course the same on the other side. So this is only half the solution. The other half is we'll be putting another set of gussets on the other side. And like I said, there will be a solid piece of wood that will go across the top. Now this being where the mass is coming out, this whole section right here is going to be taken out and there'll be a hole. But there'll be all kinds of extra structure running fore and aft to take up the load. All right, I think I'm in a good place now where I can glue this up. Well, here we have it. We're all clamped up. We're all glued up. And we're just about to tent this and call it a day. Happy with the new camber. Well, here it is all tented. It's been tented overnight. Uh, it's not a pretty solution, but it is effective. Well, uh, let's just check the glue here. So, oh yeah, yeah, it's nice and hard. A little bit of residue, you can feel it. It's, it's very hard. And of course, we also glued up this stuff and yeah, everything, everything appears to have worked out. It's, uh, the temperatures, I can still work with these. It's only going down to about minus three, minus four at night. If it gets much colder, I will have to switch up and work on stuff inside my warm uh, gluing room just over here. There's still plenty I can do. So next on the agenda is bulkhead five, and this will be a watertight bulkhead, although most of that work won't be done until later. But I just want to show you this. The, uh, the bulkhead itself is accurately uh, put into the, where the shear is on both sides, but after that, it takes on a mind of its own. Um, I'm going to have to try to straighten these because they seem to be going, this one is curving that way, and the other one is curving this way. Um, <laughs> so anyway, we have a little challenge before I can build the rest of the bulkhead above it. Let me think on this for a second. Okay, so now uh, I've got the piece of ply that's going to form the upper section of bulkhead. Let me just count it out. Three, four, five. Bulkhead number five, which is our watertight bulkhead. So now I've already pre-marked this to the where it's going to sit on top of the other partial bulkhead on each side. I know how high my cabin side comes up to that point. And now using our template, that we made for the camber of the deck, which is actually twice the camber that was in the plan, but I like this look. So again, center line, and then you have a center line, your ply, and that's what makes this job so easy. And then I'll zero it out on the edges. Just make sure the other edge is right. Okay. So we're good. If you go a little bit this way, we're good, and we're good. Okay, so now we're in that great position where we can just draw a line. Okay, and then we'll just pick this up and we'll take a look at what we have. So you can see, I mean, this camber isn't that great either. <laughs> well, I mean, it's lovely, but it's uh, not overly deep. You can see over this almost six feet that it's only sticking up, um, you know, a little over two inches over that segment. That's great. That'll be nice to walk on yet shed water. And at the same time, any time you take plywood and you flex it like we will be doing on the cabin top, that creates stress in the plywood, a positive stress which makes it really stronger than if you had it flat. 
So with all those factors working for us, and of course it'll get fiberglass. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. Anyway, time to crack on with cutting this. So when I, when I decided I was doing bulkhead five today, I thought it was going to be really easy, but I'm part of the reason it's so difficult is because you can kind of see here how they don't line up. So we have to straighten them at the same time. So it's a, it's a complex sort of glue up and inside my glue up room, I've got Mrs. Rover just mixing up some. I've already painted these four pieces and they'll get glue next and the bulkhead itself it's been painted wherever it's going to need laminations anyway we're just mixing up another batch that'll be for some glue and then we're uh, ready to start assembling Well, there we go. We have it all clamped up uh, and mostly screwed on. Um, I'm going to have to remove those screws first thing in the morning. We actually have a storm brewing outside. It's the same storm that has 250 million Americans under uh, a storm watch. And we're expecting winds of 50 knots this evening, gusts of 50 knots. Anyway, I'm about to tarp this, turn the heat on. It was complex because of the twist I hope the uh, GoPro picked up some of the action with Mrs. Rover here. Okay, the storm has mostly passed. <laughs> and that shovel that you see over there, that's my snow shovel. Last night it started its journey right from here. So, uh, and of course the garbage cans, I don't know if you can see them at the end of the driveway there on their side, but I've already checked the house, no structural damage. Now let's head over to the shop and take a look at Wave Rover. Well, the bulkhead was tented overnight, heat was left on, and uh, let's just see how it turned out. Well, I, I just want to point this out to you. See, those didn't stick, and they should have. But I've wrapped them in packing tape. I have four of them that I use for special purposes like that. A nice little, uh, nice little tip. Okay, I'll just take the rest of these clamps off and then remove the screws and we'll see did it remain straight or will I have to do some more remedial work to it to straighten it. All right. Okay, with all the clamps and screws taken off, uh, I'm eager to see how straight it is, so we'll have to get at a different angle to see that. Right. Well, I'd say 90% of that curvature has been taken out. There's still a little bit. You can kind of see it curves like this, but I'll be able to straighten that once we get our solid piece of wood that goes right across the top of this, and then of course, there are stringers that go along the cabin top for strength and I'll be able to use those to bring this the final little bit into line. Okay, I'm calling this a victory and when we look at it now, all bulkheads, yikes, all the bulkheads are in place. Uh, there's still a lot more work to go on them but our big push to get the bulkheads done uh, sort of worked out. You know, we, we had temperatures that we had to contend with but the, the, the skeleton of the uh, boat really is there and I can work around the temperatures now that I uh, have tarps, electric heaters, and a lot of the work is done. Okay. Well, Rovers, I'm pretty happy with the progress that I've been able to make on the bulkheads. And the camber 
is way more pleasing to my eye right now than it was toward the beginning of this video. Now, the storm that I told you about, it, we had a few uh, minor power glitches as a result of it. However, there are over 10,000 homes on the island without power, which is a significant number uh, in our population. I, I think there might be something like 70,000 households in total. So one in seven doesn't have power right now. The storm is diminishing. Like I said, it's probably only 30 knots. Uh, that's still significant, but it got up to over 50 knots last night. It, it was something else. Now, this is a reminder to me that I need to have some sort of solution in place for power outages because if just just a, a little over a month and a half ago we had Hurricane Fiona come up through here and that knocked out power for some folks for over two weeks and that's just not acceptable if I for this project because I need I don't need a lot of power to to get things done but I do need power to get things done on this project we're still looking at a launch date of uh, sometime this summer so I can't afford lost time due to dodgy uh, power infrastructure so I'm going to seek a solution on that more to come on that hopefully in the next couple of weeks so in the next video I'll be working on the aft bulkhead you know the one with the great big camber on it that's only temporarily held in place I've got to secure that we've got to um, secure all of these bulkheads and put the uh, proper wood on them, solid wood. That all needs to take place pretty quickly. Also in the next video, I will have made a decision on what kind of hatch I want to have for this boat. Is it going to be the style I had on the original Wave Rover or will it be a door style hatch? I've got a lot of input from you guys. I've taken it all on board. I know what my uh, preferences are so I'll put all that together and I'll come up with a solution I'll let you know what that is in the next video so as always rovers thanks for watching I'd like to take a moment to honor the wave rover benefactors so what is a benefactor well these folks have made a contribution of $100 US or more to the project and their names will be affixed to a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our circumnavigation. Now these donations truly are much appreciated. Well, the Wave Rover patrons, with their pledges of support, really do make the creation of these videos possible. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactor's Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now, another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. Brilliant.